Hello, how y'all doing? I'm going to talk to you today about Robbie Zacharias. I'm not, I don't know if he made it. I'm not sure if he made it to heaven. I don't know. Now, to be honest about it, I was shocked. Um, I didn't know he had that part of his personality. I don't think anybody knew. All these people, all these so-called Christian leaders take everybody by surprise. Jerry Falwell Sr., Jerry Falwell Jr., hello. Uh, I think all of them took, when they, when they get into sin, and there's plenty of them. I mean, I've been to two churches where the pastors got into deep sin. Okay, and um, when these pastors get into sin or when these evangelists get into sin, we're always shocked. Now, the way I knew about Robbie Zacharias years ago when I had time, I would listen to him at a certain time on the radio and this other preacher on the radio that came in at a certain time and I would listen to them. And he fascinated me. You know, this is a man with an accent who's preaching the gospel. And uh, I, I didn't even know what he looked like, but you know, it's fascinating to hear somebody with an, an accent, probably Indian accent, preach the word of God. So I'm fascinated now. But it wasn't until I got on YouTube that I could put the face with the voice. But I used to listen to him on the radio. And then uh, I listened to him a little bit on YouTube. But it wasn't until I got on YouTube about three or four years ago that I was able to even put a face with the voice. But I, mean, I was interested. You know, you got an Indian with an accent. Uh, he's speaking English fluently. And he's an evangelist. I'm interested. <laughs> okay, I'm interested now, okay? Now, um, I did find him fascinating, okay? Um, like I said, you know, I don't usually call, call names. I don't use, I don't like to do that. I don't like to call names in my YouTube video. I only do that when people are totally outrageous and shocking, okay? If you're outrageous and shocking, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to say your name. But, uh, I, I, I generally don't like to do that. But in this case, yeah, I'm going to do that, Okay. Now, part of the problem, I'm not making any, I'm not making any excuses for his behavior, but part of the problem could be that he didn't know the law. He didn't understand the law. When I was totally by myself and it was just me and God talking, the Lord started talking to me about the law. And I was like, what, what law? What are you talking about? He was not talking about the Ten Commandments. He was talking about the law. So I went back to uh, Genesis and Deuteronomy and Leviticus and I read the law. And I understood, I have a better understanding as a Christian, the law. Oh, okay, this is the law. It's a lot more deeper than we know. The Ten Commandments is a lot more deeper than we know. Okay, it's a whole lot deep. I didn't even know the law. When I first became a Christian, I thought, okay, now that I'm a Christian, they're going to teach me how to shout, swing on the chandeliers and stuff. Which is not what, not who, not, uh, what I wanted. It's not my personality, swing on chandeliers. But what they did tell me was to... Uh, get into the word to read the Bible. They did tell me that. Um, but uh, you know, over the years I've had my own private Bible study. I still have my own private Bible study. But when I was totally alone, I went back to Genesis, Deuteronomy, Leviticus to learn the law. I said, Oh, nobody ever told me about this. So I'm I'm not making excuses for his behavior, but I'm saying maybe he didn't know the law. You know, King David said, I won't put anything wicked before my face. You know, we shouldn't put anything wicked before our faces. No pictures, no cell phone pictures, no no pictures on the tablet or whatever. We should set nothing wicked before our face. And um, I was I came to understand in the New Testament, Jesus expounded on the law. He said, you already have the law. The only thing Jesus changed in the law, he said, one man, one, one wife. Okay. And he said, if you even look upon a woman with lust, or if you're a woman and you look upon a man with lust, you have already lusted after that person in your heart. Okay? Jesus did say that. That's the law is how I found out what true prosperity is. Rather than this give and get, give and get, which is what I've been brainwashed to, to uh, learn. But that's not what was in the Old Testament. The Old Testament said, go out and possess the land. That's the first command. That's how I learned true prosperity. Uh, the Lord said in the Old Testament, and particularly in Proverbs, be diligent in everything that you do. Be excellent. Be um, hardworking in everything that you do. And he said, you're going to sit before kings. You're going to get riches, honor, and life if you're a hard worker. Now, that is not preaching the prosperity. But like I said, I had to go back to the law. 
I had to go back to Genesis, Deuteronomy, Leviticus. I had to go back to Psalms, Proverbs. Now, God said we're supposed to work by the sweat of our brow. Now, I think that maybe Ravi Zacharias didn't know the law. Or he didn't understand it. Um, what is salvation? Salvation is definitely mentioned in Psalms. It's definitely the prophets mentioned Isaiah, Jeremiah, Isaiah. They mentioned salvation. So maybe he didn't have a, a deeper understanding of salvation. Maybe he didn't understand deliverance because Jesus said he came to set the captive free. Captive by what? Pornography, lust, cheating, stealing, etc., etc. He said he came to set us free. Maybe he didn't have an understanding of that. Um, some people are captive by murder. There's some bitches out there that are killing people. Okay, they're captive by murder. So I know the Lord talked to him. I, Because I know the Lord. Because when you spend time with the Lord, you know him. And I know the Lord told him things like John 8, 11. He said, go and sin no more. And then Romans 2, 1, he said, thou art inexcusable, O man. And he, he also said, we, he is encompassed by a great cloud of witness for the sin that so easily besets us. These sins of lust and so on, they easily beset us, but Jesus has come to set us free. He also showed in Romans 12, 1, to present his body as a living sacrifice. I'm sure the Lord told him all those things um, and, and probably more. Um, but maybe he didn't put his sin on the altar. We have to put our sins on the altar. I don't think Ravi Jack Zacharias put his sin on the altar because he wanted to continue to sin. He didn't fast and pray. That breaks the yokes of bondage, bondage to pornography, bondage to this, that, and the other. Uh, he didn't fast and pray. Paul said, I don't even trust myself. I don't even trust myself. I don't even trust myself. Okay. So Paul said he didn't, doesn't even trust himself. And Robbie Zacharias should not have even trusted himself. Now, in Africa, they have no hang-ups about sex. You got to look at his culture, too. In Africa, they have no hang-ups about sex. Everybody goes to bed naked, y'all. <laughs> in India, they have no hang-ups about sex. Everybody goes to bed naked, okay? <laughs> Americans only want to have hang-ups about sex. And maybe that's why we're the biggest purveyor of pornography. It's because we have so many hang-ups about sex based on our heritage of Puritanism, Quakerism, and so on and so, so, so forth. So what, you know, Thomas Jefferson, he's horny as all get out. What does he do? He doesn't come out with all this sexuality. He just, he just um, has sex with Sally Hemings all over the place. As he did with probably a whole bunch of other slave girls, okay? We always do stuff in secret. America has hang-ups about sex, but in Africa and in India, they're so close to nature, they don't have any hang-ups about sex. I mean, true India is an idolatrous nation. Uh, Africa is, uh, but America is too, so we can't talk. We, we, we have all kinds of idols. Uh, but his culture is different. Like I said, everybody goes to bed naked in, in India. Everybody goes to bed naked in Africa. In Africa, what do we do in America? We got pajamas on and all this other stuff, okay? I do think that he possibly has some enablers in his ministry. I'm sure his wife knew. I'm sure his daughter knew. I'm sure the people at the top, the people at the bottom knew. But see, they're putting him under pressure. Go preach. Don't, don't confront this sin. Go preach the word. You know, because see, the more he preached, that's, that's their paycheck right there. He, they probably put him under pressure to go preach, go say something. You know, because they want that $100,000 that pays their salary. Um... In my opinion, if you 50, I, I'm now hearing things about Creflo Dollar. He's, he has something controversial, okay, going on. Okay, if you know, what is Creflo, late 50s, early 60s, something like that? Robbie Jacobiah was in his 60s, 70s, when all this happened. If you don't know how to keep yourself out of sin by the time you're in your late 50s, 60s, and 70s, you're never going to know. I mean, by that time, you should be through with sin, particularly late 50s. 60s, you should be through with sin. 70s, you definitely should be, shouldn't even be in your mind about sin. Because you know what? Once you be 70, everything is over with. Okay? Um, 
So I just, you know, a lot of times when people get into sin, particularly uh, people who are preaching the gospel, they believe they can play with God. They believe they can play with sin and there's no consequence. But the, but the God, but God said, you are storing up wrath in the day of your judgment. But a lot of people think they can play with sin. You know, sometimes people who are not saved, they go do something and that's it. They go on, they ain't going to hell. Just like these people who rob people, burglarize these houses. Okay, these 16, 17 year olds, they go to these houses, burglarizing, they shot dead, they gone to hell. Sometimes that's just it for them. Sometimes that's the last time they're going to commit any more sin on this earth. They dead, gone to hell. That's it. End of story. But a lot of people play with sin. They're going to do it one more time. A lot of Christians play with sin. They're going to sleep. They're going to do this one more time. They're going to fornicate one more time. They're going to be an adulterer one more time. They're going to look at pornography one more time. And the Lord doesn't see it. You know what? There's nothing new under the sun. They were saying that in the Old Testament. If you read uh, the book of Jeremiah and Isaiah, the ancient Israelites were saying the same thing. If we sin under the green tree, the Lord doesn't see it. If we sin in the temple, ritual prostitution, male and female. If we kill these babies, the Lord doesn't see it. It's, there's nothing, nothing new under the sun. They said that in the Old Testament. The Lord doesn't see it. But I find Christians play with sin all the time. And I don't understand why Robert Zacharias, he may have not known what salvation is. Because he kept playing with sin. He played, played with sin one more time. Okay. And I think at some point God said, yeah, I forgive you. He may have said it one, two, three times, even three times God said. But I think Eventually, the Lord said, I'm going to give you up to a reprobate mind to do that, which is not convenient. And I know there's going to be some voodoo prophetess or prophet that's going to say they had a vision, die, and they saw Robbie Zacharias in, in hell. I know there's going, there's going to be one. I know who they are going to be, too. I know exactly who they're going to be. Because I know who the false prophets are. Now, what I don't understand about Robbie Zacharias is why he didn't, uh, he knew he was, he probably knew he had a terminal illness. Why didn't he delete some of those pictures, at least so not the world can't see him? Why didn't he delete them from his phone, delete them from his computer, tablet, whatever he had? You know, at least so the world wouldn't see it, okay? I don't understand that. But it could be a cultural problem. Like I said, in America, we just hung up about sex. We got hang up about sex. In his country, in India, they go to bed naked. Africa, they go to bed naked. They're going to have hang ups about sex. We got all kinds of hang ups about sex in America. Um... We just do. We have so it could have been a cultural issue. Like I said, maybe he didn't understand the law. Maybe he didn't, uh, didn't understand the uh, Ten Commandments. Maybe he didn't even understand the whole concept of salvation. Maybe he didn't understand when Jesus said, "I can just come to set the captive free." Maybe he just didn't understand that. But you know, he kept playing with sin. You know, when you in your seventies, like he was, it's time for you know you, he should well have given up on sin, put that mess on the altar. But uh, I'm, I'm hearing that even. Uh, Toward his death, he had looking at pictures. Uh, so I don't know if he made it to him. I don't know. I really I cannot say for sure. You know, a lot of these people, a lot of these evangelists, I have to admit, I never worried about. I never worried about any of these preachers or evangelists going to hell because I thought they were all heaven bound. But then when they died, they got all these secret sins, and then uh and then I'm not sure. Or before they die, uh they're doing this sin and doing that sin, and boom, they dead. So I don't know if he made it. I really don't. Have a nice day.